You're listening to the Screaming Pods Network. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Something pepper and heavy D up in the limousine. Hanging pictures on my wall. Every Saturday, rap attack Mr. Magic Molly Mall. I let my tape rock to my tape pop. Smoking weed and bamboo, sipping on private stock. Way back when I had the red and black lumberjack with the hat to match. Remember rapping Duke? The hard, the hard. You never thought that hip hop would take it this far. Now I'm in the limelight because I rhyme tight. Time to get paid. Blow, blow up like the world trade. It, well, you know, blow up here is, of course, street vernacular. It means uh, uh, to get bigger, to get more important, to. Uh, to, to to overextend one's oneself in a way that is both uh, uh, welcoming financially and uh, uh, you know socially it, it does not mean uh, blow up like uh, an explosive device in world trade of course is not referring to a place it is referring to the act of well uh, that just that trade you know the world would blow up uh, financially and uh, socially. Uh, our, our relations socially if uh, the world just traded uh, goods with each other. And those goods don't need to be tangible. It could be something like love. And I want to share some love with you. And that love will be for shot on video films, man. Well, I, I realize, of course, saying video and film is a little... No, well, it's episode 9, so you get it by this point. We are T-H-E-S-O-V-P-O-D. My name is Mike D. The Django is silent. And joining me now, forever, and always, is goddamn... Look, no disrespect to Jason Statham, Vin Diesel, or the cast of any of the Fast and Furious movies. The most beautiful... Bald-headed man on the planet. I am talking, of course, about Brad. Fantastic Fest can suck it. South by baby Henderson. How are you, pumpkin pie? Oh, I am in Austin, Texas. I took the MCO to the AUS to South by. And I'm in my favorite store of all time, Best Buy, recording in the bathroom. Just for you, Mike Delaney. <laughs> oh, I love it, sweetheart. You know, that that's a real turn-on for me because one of my ultimate screen crushes is Clint Howard in Rock and Roll High School. And, I, you know, I always thought it was so masculine and, uh, and, and attractive, the power that he had with his office bathroom or his bathroom office. I don't know which way we would put the office in the bathroom, but, baby, you put it together and it becomes... Sex. So, uh, how does the office bathroom work, or the bathroom office? Well, I mean, I'm in a stall in the corner, and I'm just like acting like I'm shitting. And you know, sometimes people will be on the phone talking, so I'm just acting like that right now. And I'm sure no one will bother me. Great. Uh, every now and again, do you have to do uh, a courtesy flush to keep up the ruse that you are indeed defecating? Yeah, so if you hear a flush, uh, I apologize, and I'll, I'll do my best to keep them discreet. <laughs> discreet on the street, but not between the sheet. Brad, I hear you are visiting South by Southwest, uh, the, the, the film festival part. I know they do music, right? I know they do TED Talks with, uh, with like, hip liberals and shit, but you're there for the the, the film festival. Now... What what are you most excited about at South by? I well right now uh Rob Hunter is sitting in for me for the quiet place. So I'm sure I'll get the rundown from him on if it's a good movie or not. So he's he's uh, keeping my spot there and uh, I'll write my review based off of his review uh a little bit later, but I'm you know, I bought all the tickets for all the retro screenings. I'm so excited uh for a retro screening of Blade, which is going to be Ooh. happening uh sometime tomorrow. Oh, beautiful! Now that's that's of course the uh, the, the classic film from uh, Marvel star Wesley Snipes. It it still remains one of my all time fa- horror action flicks of all time. Snipes, Logue, and Christopherson are compelling throughout. Wonderful cinematography and choreography. Blood rave scene is my church. Wish the franchise would come back. You keep your eyes open. 
They're everywhere. A secret nation of evil. Tonight, the age of man comes to an end. A war to save our world. Played myself, killed as many of them as we can find. A hero who knows no fear. He makes the weapons. I use them. Wesley Snipes. Stephen Dorff. Blade. Rated R. Starts Friday, August 21st. Do you... Now... It, 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 it's interesting you say that because yeah, this is a very popular opinion that uh, that the, the Blade films hold up, and not only should they come back, but they should come back full fold into mm. this. Uh, what, what I hear, I don't know much about it, but I hear there's a uh, 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 comic book, uh, cinematic, um, you know, world, uh, uni- galaxy, universe. Yeah, it's, it's it's called the the Marvel the you know. The Marvel Get Up Group and the in Infinity uh, Sleepover, I believe, is what this new one's called. And I think there's rumblings that there might be a secret screening of Infinity Gauntlet War. And I think this is part 19 in the Marvel Universe. And I'm so excited for Dark Panther to make an appearance in Spider Baby, uh, as well. Mr. Strange is my favorite of all time. I just love the gray streaks in his hair, and it gets me hot. Look, I don't want to say pale is at work here, but this episode is indeed brought to you by Marvel's Infinity Gauntlet War. It comes out in cinemas this year, next uh, next month. This year, next month. What's on your weird mind? I'm putting together a team. I'm in. You are? That was beautiful. These things are going to keep coming. You get tactical. I'm on bug duty. Let's do it. Right ain't over yet. <laughs> My man. Justice League. Rated PG-13. All right. Mm-hmm. So before we get into our main attraction, which is, of course, John Duncan's The Hackers from 1988, not to be confused with Angelina Jolie's 1995 opus, Hackers, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We will be talking a little dining. We're going to dine out, Bradley, like we Mm. always do. Now, baby, you're on the road, honey. And we've talked takeout before because, look, we're, we're ultimately sponsored by Arby's. The beef has to be corned, the kraut sour, and the dressing needs to taste like no less than a thousand islands. Arby's Rubin. Arby's, we have the meat. Yes, that is correct. Unfortunately, Austin, for some reason, uh, has no Arby's near the theater. So I ate at this place called Fazoli's. Have you heard of Fazoli's? I have not heard of Fazoli's. Educate me, son. Fazoli's is a fast food Italian place. They are known for their all-you-can-eat breadsticks. All-you-can-eat bread? Bread sticks. Like, you know, wait, like wait, bread wait. dicks. They're like dicks made of bread that you put in your mouth. All right, They're like I have a dicks made of bread Brad, that you put in your about, mouth. Uh, They're like breadsticks. dicks made of bread that you put in your mouth. They're like dicks made of bread that you put in your mouth. They're like dicks made of bread that you put in your mouth. They're like dicks made of bread that you put in your mouth. They're like dicks made of bread that you put in your mouth. They're like a dowling that you would use in like wood shop, making like a birdhouse for like a little perch, you know? And, and they're hard and crunchy. No, and no. then there's breadsticks. Right. Oh, is this what you're talking about? The ones that are like mini loaves. Oh, these are big and fat. Uh. Big, fat, buttery with Parmesan cheese sprinkled and shooting everywhere. Oh, dear They're Lord. fantastic. Now, uh, besides the all-you-can-eat breadsticks, <laughs> what what about uh, the, the pastas? What, what's a pasta you like to get at Frizzoli's? Nice place, huh, guys? Come on, stomach. Let's get out of here. Yeah, let's go. Where do you think you're going? Fazoli's, where the food's better and faster. Yeah, and where I don't have to take a beating. More salad? See, that's not cool. All right, I'll drive. Go where your stomach and wallet really want to go. Fazoli's. Choose from six new pastas like tortellini and sun-dried tomato rustico and penne with creamy basil chicken. Get two new pastas and drinks with unlimited breadsticks, all for just $9.99. Only at Fazoli's. I... 
like. I mean, you can get the straight up spaghetti with the red sauce, and that's good. If you're in, you know, just want something quick, you just go there and get the good old spaghetti. Make sure you get a few extra packets of Parmesan. But what I decided to get was their shrimp and chicken pasta with tomatoes and peas mixed right in there. Uh, there you go, sweetheart. Now, I have a question about the uh, the tomatoes. Are they doing that move where it's like the uh, where it's uh, it's like the fresh tomatoes that are put onto the pasta after the pasta is cooked, or is it tomatoes cooked into the pasta? They are kind of cooked separately, a tinge, and then just set on there, sprinkled throughout in a nice little pattern. <laughs> now, now when you get pasta to go, it just looks beautiful <laughs> in that styrofoam box. Yeah. It looks it's amazing. styrofoam, the box? Well, I mean, this is to go. You're driving through, basically you're driving through a pasta place. <laughs> and you order it and they just give it to you and you eat it right there in your car. Uh, I always ask for like an extra bag of breadsticks because it's all you can eat. Sometimes if I feel like I don't have enough or if I finish them as I'm driving through the parking lot, I'll stop the car and I'll go in and ask for more breadsticks. That is, that is beautiful. You, well, you have to. It's all you can eat. Can can you hit up? You have to take advantage. Can you hit of up Frizzoli after Frizzoli? If you if you like have your receipt from like a Frizzoli in Austin, can you drive through a Frizzoli in Dallas? Show them the Austin receipt and be like, "Bitch, this is like a, a goddamn franchise. It's all you can eat. Let's keep this bread train going." Can you do that? Fuck yes. Get the breadsticks in your mouth. Eat them up all the time. All the time. All right. I love your recommendation of Frizzoli's and, of course, uh, uh, Italian-American cuisine because I think about this movie, The Hackers, 1988, directed by John Duncan, and uh, and I think a family, all right? And then, not to reuse a reference from earlier this episode, but when I think of family, I think of uh, Fast and the Furious, and I think of themes throughout uh, mobster uh, Italian movies, so... I think Italian cuisine goes with it. Now, I'm a little bit more basic. I watched the movie, and I'm like, oh, what would I pair with the hackers? And uh, there's a great scene we'll talk about today, Brad, with uh, with fishing. And there's, of course, multiple great scenes that we'll talk about with uh, fingers, digits, getting uh, removed from uh, a hand. So I recommend... Fish fingers for your fun little, hey, isn't that cute? Way to uh, connect to the hackers uh, through cuisine. Now, mm. Brad, I want to get straight into it. I want to jump right in. We, we might do, do that thing where I play a trailer. That damn gardener, he's got a big mouth. Ignorant man. He sure has, boss. Huh? You take these cops and feed him and teach him a little respect. Okay, Pa. <laughs> Come here, my boys. I'd fire your ass right off this job right now. We should have been out of here by now. Pa, we're working as fast as we can. We ain't slaves. Not fast enough, damn it. I bid this job too cheap, man. 350 bucks, I bet a couple of days we'd be on it.
Brad? Brad? Yes. Brad? Yes. Brad? I am Brad. I am Brad Henderson. Brad? I have a cold. Brad? Yes. I'm here. Tell us about John Duncan's The Hackers. John Duncan's The Hackers is a 1988 shot on video film. A girl uh, is offered to kind of stay at her family's country estate while they're on a trip. And she's expecting some maintenance men to swing by and work on the house. Uh, These maintenance men are none other than the hackers. Their last name literally is the hackers. There's Pa Hacker. Yeah. Arnie Hacker. And then the simple-minded Eldon Hacker. Say what? Who likes to wear a fashionable uh, steel eyepiece and fake teeth. I mean, they're real teeth. I think they're not. Fake I think at it's all. a medieval times facicle. I think that's uh, the technical term. Yes. <laughs> so, Brad, you of course are our resident uh, shot on video SOV. SOV for all you people that have been keeping up with the last oh, say eight past episodes. We're cool now. We say Sov. The Sov Pod. That's what Daddy Dereger likes. Sov Pod. Sov Pod in the pants. Brad, did you ever talk to Sean offline about like uh, about the branding? Like, is it Sov Pod? Is it uh, S O V P O D? What? I don't know. I think. I think. Really, I think Sean drinks way too much. Uh, he may have a little bit of an alcohol problem, and. Sometimes when we get into these arguments, I just kind of let him do what he wants to do and say what he wants to say. And But to me, this is always and ever will be the Mike Delaney Love Fest. I mean, the shot on, no, the SOV pod. Wait, Brad, we're pronouncing pod now? I, I like the, let's go with the, let's go with the fucking letters, baby. Do it again. Do it again. Do it all nine. Do, I mean, do the, all nine, the, baby bitch. T H E S O V P O D. Oh, you did it. Mike Delaney, uh, I want your mouth around my pants. Oh, you did it. All right. So cool. All right. We're So tell Daddy Dereger 100%. It's T H E S O V P O D. The P O D stands for penis on delicious lips. All right. So, uh, so Brad, you are, of course, the resident expert on shot on video films. Why did you pick the hackers? I I had never heard of this until uh, until you gave it to me. Literally, you gave it to me. So why did you pick the hackers? Well, I was watching Geostorm, and what a fantastic movie that got snubbed at the Oscars uh, this year. It's a shame, but there's some scenes uh, with the father and the daughter sitting by a lake, and I thought of that scene in ha- the hackers when the the father and the sons are sitting there looking at the boat driving by and it's a really great moment between the father and and his maniac killer sons uh and i just got to thinking i was like i need to call mike laney right now so i paused geostorm one of my favorite movies of all time right now and i said mike delaney we need to do the hackers because it's a very it really is a movie all about the love of a father and his sons and it very it touched me so much that I, I I figure we need we really need to do this because it's really not about the girl or the murders or the maniacs. It really is this pa hacker loves his little boys Arnie and Eldon so much that he will do anything and he's taught them well. He's brought them up in this world, and really that's what the the film's themes are all about. And just really touched me. I do not disagree with you. I do think that this is legitimately a a, a film about. Uh, The titular, I love that word, oh my god. It makes me think about girls, but I still love it, titular. It's really a film about the titular uh, hackers. And in that, uh, just like Brad said, we're we're not really caught up in the story of this uh, teenage girl who's played by a middle-aged woman uh, staying at a house in the Hamptons or whatever, which is played by the, the, the fucking Big Thumb in Michigan. Uh, we are concerned about this. Uh, they're not cannibalistic, and I'll I'll get to that in a second. But this uh, this family of the hackers. Now, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the hackers' um, production history. There's not much out there 
uh, imprint on the film. There's a lot of, um, you know, dark, deep dark web reviews of the hackers for folks that have uh, have been fans since uh, since the 80s or have maybe watched bootleg copies of it. But uh, unlike IMDb, Brad, there's only four actors listed and then John Duncan, the director. Now, this is a movie mm-hmm. that has a full credit sequence at the end where clearly if, if anyone's a fan of the hackers, they could go update the IMDb uh, and and get uh, notice to, to all the uh, hardworking artisans that, that worked on the picture. But here, here's what I found from the official website of the studio that produced the hackers, Camelot Studios. In 1987, Camelot Studios produced a low-budget movie for the video market, utilizing local talent and actors. Already, this this, this is like quintessential SOV. Mm. It's 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 giving us in one sentence exactly every SOV movie we've ever watched. With a small but ambitious crew, the movie went into production. John Duncan wrote the script to include people and places from Michigan's Thumb area. Paw Hacker worked for John at one time as a building crew foreman. So it's autobi- it's autobiographical in a way, where John Duncan is telling the story of an actual foreman, an actual handyman that, uh, that helped him at Camelot Studios. Arnie was a local musician who frequented Duncan's music store in Croswell. Dave Duncan, Camelot Studios' current owner, filmed and edited the project. The featured house in the film was John Duncan's residence for over 25 years outside of the town of Applegate. He sold it in 1991, and Brad, it burned to the ground in 2008. Several cast members have passed away since it was produced. Howard Coburn, Paw Hacker, Dave Coggle, Arnie Hacker, Chuck Maybe. Hunter on the Road, Ralph Dove, The Heckler in the Bar, and Rick Robbins, the homeowner unhappy with the hacker's workmanship. All all those uh, poor men have passed away, R.I.P. The movie's heroine, mm. played by Michelle Rank, later married Rick Robbins and still resides in Michigan. The film was released in 1988. About 3,000 copies were distributed. It was a great experience for a young company. Again, that is from uh, the Camelot Studios website. Let's let's talk about CamelotStudios.net. Yeah, there's even their phone number. So if you have any questions about uh, the hackers, I believe you can just call them and ask you, them up. Ask yeah, them about you could it. also write the PO box address at the uh, the end of the film itself. The, the, the you know. And if you need production in the Michigan area, they're available. This episode is, of course, brought to you by a film that would never shoot in Michigan, Marvel's The Avengers Infinity Gauntlet War 2018. Go. What's on your weird mind? I'm putting together a team. I'm in. You are? That was beautiful. These things are going to keep coming. You get technical. I'm on bug duty. Let's do it. Ride ain't over yet. <laughs> My man. Justice League. Rated PG-13. <laughs> All right, Brad, we are back. <laughs> let's let's just get into our free form flowing. Let, let's freak freely about the hackers. Let's do this. Let's, let's fucking do this. Now, um, you got to start with what it was all about. You got to give a little synopsis. I got to give a little history. I want to I want to jump right in. I want to tell you. Right off the bat, Brad, this feels like the shot on video feature length version of uh, of uh, Chop Top, Leatherface, and The Cook from Toby Hooper's uh, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. Thirteen years ago, audiences across America were horrified by the brutality of a faceless killer. Now, after more than a decade of silence, he has come out of hiding. Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2, directed by Toby Hooper. Now playing at a theater near you. Yes, uh, and I am Brad Henderson. Uh, This is Brad Henderson. I'm just trying to talk quietly because I'm in this bathroom here and I'm just trying to... uh, 
not bring a lot of attention to myself. But yes, yeah, it just definitely feels like a flick that if you take those characters and put them into this low budget movie, you're, you kind of follow them along and and uh, you know they're. I actually loved kind of spending time with this weird little family because it's it's almost like, you know, they're just these hardworking guys just trying to make a living, uh, trying to do their shitty maintenance work, and sometimes they're good at it, sometimes they're not, and, you know, their business model really is, if we don't do a good job and you don't want to pay us, we'll kill you. <laughs> yeah. But also, but also... They just the the boys especially. It's kind of uh, it's just kind of a hobby, really. Uh, they're they're chopping and uh, murderous ways is just kind of they're just compelled. I mean, you know, like most young boys will just you know pull over to the bushes and and jerk off. Uh, these guys will just pull over to the bushes and just hack a woman to bits. It's just really it's just normal kind of you know impulses. I believe that they're just acting on. They're just a little misguided. Let me stop you right there, Brad. I wanted to know the the data set that you looked at to find out that most little boys would pull off to the bushes and jerk off. Where, where did you get that uh-huh. data? Uh, I think it's uh, whydoijerkoff.org. Oh, like an actual nonprofit organization like compiled this data? They're, re- they're, they're really trying to do the Lord's work. And you know, let people know that it's okay to to jerk off in strange and weird places. And if you are interested in the Lord's work, we are of course on the Screaming Pods Network, and we have various religious based shows where you can hear all about the Lord's work, which <laughs> happens in very mysterious ways. So please follow Screaming Pods, uh, the entire network, and and subscribe to all the shows. Now, thank you so much. The Screamcast is okay too. Scream. <laughs> Brad, it, they, look, episode nine, and this is the first time you've ever mentioned the Screamcast. That is, you know, bless you, baby. I, I think I've I've tried to shill for the Splat House podcast for uh, quite some time. And, you know, actually, the new episode just dropped yesterday. It's a full commentary on House 1977. Yes. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Love All right. It. So, I yeah, I'm, so I'm watching the movie, Brad Henderson. And I, I can't help but think that Arnie is Bill Mosley as Chop Top in Texas mm-hmm. Chainsaw 2 because he's uh, he's clearly – he's dressed like a Vietnam vet. He clearly has some PTSD. He, uh, he, he's out of time. He's out of place. He, he's completely crazy. He's the chatterbox of, uh, of the, the, the group, the trio. And then, of course, we have, we have Paw Hacker who – who is the uh, the patriarchal figure of the group? He's the one who issues uh, the orders and the ones that the the boys, although they don't always listen to him, they uh, they want to please him. They want to comply with his orders. They want to make him proud. Uh, and he's he's you know of course the uh, well to go back to the Italian film references. He's he's the head of the family, right? And then we have is mm-hmm. his name Eldon or Alden? Eldon. Eldon. Yeah, yeah. We have Eldon, who is uh, a functional mute, not unlike Sally Hawkins in the Oscar winning best picture, The Shape of Water. <laughs> and not unlike Sally Hawkins, he would probably fuck a fish. Eldon Hacker. He definitely, definitely would fuck a fish. I, I, you know, Brad. I, not a fish monster. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, I don't want to say he would fuck a fish. <laughs> I want to say he, he has fucked multiple fishes, like, <laughs> throughout yes. the Great Lakes. We could say that as a, as a fact. <laughs> that is a fact. Yeah, but he, he reminds me, of course, of, uh, of Leatherface, right? He even, has, uh, yeah. he even has a mask, and he has the, the, the gangly teeth that you would get from, like, Spencer's Gifts, and he has this hulking body like a Gunnar <laughs> Hansen, you know? Uh, I, I think their entire their entire uh, chemistry is is very reminiscent of Toby Hooper's uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre family, particularly the the Canon Films interpretation, uh, which is 1986. So I think it couple years. I think I'm, it's clear that this is kind of based. May or may not be. Yeah, I think so. I think that's fair. That's that's a fair assessment for sure. But 
but to that regard, I think the film itself, like the the jokey tone, the um, the dread that comes across with some of uh, many of the the murders, particularly the uh, the the murder where they go get the angry homeowner who isn't going to pay up. That's like that's a that's yeah. a very Toby Hooper scene to me, where it starts off kind of funny, jokey. And then when it's when it, when it starts to turn, when it starts to become dark and sinister, you you, you have a feeling of what's going to happen, but you don't think it's going to quite go there because the film hasn't uh, like full on plunged mm-hmm. a knife into a neck yet. And then when it when it gets there, it stays there a little too long, and it makes you feel like genuinely uncomfortable. How how do you how do you feel about yeah, that? Yeah. Oh man, I I really the gore and and the stuff when it finally gets going is pretty great. I was pretty impressed, uh, pretty impressed with it all, and, and especially like when he takes that machete and he slices it through his uh, his shoulder, and it, yeah, it, it stays there a little too long, and he kind of you know just kind of yanks it out after after a bit. Like I mean, that looked really good. Like that was just very brutal, very. Uh, affecting and then uh the other then uh uh arnie comes out and he's like she's not, you know you can't call nobody with no fingers <laughs> <laughs> you see that just he had already, he'd already taken care of the wife and uh it's just the the matter of factness and the kind of joy that these guys have and it's not like over the top joy it's just kind of like you know yeah i killed her yeah i did this and the, their matter of factness and their ease at doing it is you know, you can be kind of jokey, but it is does become unsettling more and more as the movie goes on. It's kind of like the myth of the Protestant work ethic. Like, you work hard and good things will come to you. And I think this movie wants to to deconstruct and disassemble that Protestant work ethic. Whereas these, these guys work as hard as they could possibly work. We're we're hearing that they they work multiple jobs for like months and they're only getting paid like three hundred dollars and these are like full day jobs every right. day for like months and they're only getting three hundred dollars they're living in economic squalor, you know and we we hear all the time in in America with the American dream you work hard you're gonna get what uh what 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 you sow you know you're gonna reap what you sow you work hard this will happen right. and I think this movie shows that. That doesn't happen for everybody, and when that doesn't happen for everybody, there, there's no fun, there's no entertainment, th- there's no like value besides family or hard work that that's put into their lives. So you know they have to they have to fill that void with something, and of course that void will be murder, Brad. Yeah, well, but it's not always uh, murder. I mean, what the opening scene to this film is? Uh, they just take off a finger. They just kind of they're trying to buy. They just slice off a hitchhiker's thumb, so it's, there's a bit of teasing here and there as well. But they also get some R and R, Mike. Mike. Yeah, D. but but Brad. They get some R and R at a playground. Right, boys, we'll take a half hour break here, and All right. you to enjoy yourself. Don't get hurt, and don't hurt nobody. When I honk a horn, I got two guys to come and run it. Yeah, we will. We will. Okay, go ahead and enjoy yourself. I'm going over here on the bank. Come on, what's the matter, B? 
big boy? You afraid of the water? Or do you remember you can't swim? Are you just afraid of bridges? Come on. Come on, Elvin. They get they get R and R at a playground, but they're clearly <laughs> they're clearly under like duress with this R and R. Like uh, kids are getting off swings, parents are shuffling their their children away as these two big like man children go to uh, push each other, <laughs> you know, on on the playset. I don't think the parents are. I don't think the parents are shuffling away quick enough when you guys see these two lumbering towards the playground. It's business as usual. And, and you know, just seeing the parents up at the top watching their kids and they're just kind of doing their thing. And it's not unlike, you know, today's suburbia. And you see this all the time when you go by playgrounds. Willow's old, older, so she doesn't really go to the playground. She goes to horror movies with me now. But, you know, when she was younger, you know, when we go to the, the playground, the parents are all in one little pack and the kids all do their thing. So then you have these two lumbering monsters just just playing with the kids. And it's it's uh, funny, but it's also you're like, you know, if I was in that my, those shoes, I would be getting those kids off the playground ASAP. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I thought you were going to refer to the the literal uh, rest. Well, I guess uh, I guess the, the the second R is what relaxation. That's R. There, there's the, right. <laughs> well, I was going to be getting to that. Yes. Oh, do you want to do you want to yeah, get to poor, uh, when they actually rest? They 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 do. They actually spend the night in their truck, and but it doesn't seem like their house or shack or wherever they lived wasn't was that far but for some reason they I don't know if it was a nap or if they slept overnight but uh poor Eldon uh has a bladder control problem and uh he they they the pa gets out wakes them up and uh they you know they they have to go and work and poor Eldon has had an accident in the back of the truck there and it's uh, it's almost it's it's sad. Like you kind of really feel bad for Eldon because he's forced to work the rest of the day in his soiled pants. And Pa Hacker just says, oh, "It'll be dry in a couple hours. Don't worry about it." Right, as if the dampness is the problem and not like the stench of <laughs> <laughs> yeah his terrible diet and like the urine that would that would come from that. Now, did you notice what their pillows were in that scene? They were uh, these blocks, these wooden blocks. Yeah, they, they, right? the production designer used <laughs> literal, like, wooden blocks, like, sawed off from two by fours for the kids. And I'm putting <laughs> kids in air quotes. You can't see because you're in yeah. Austin and I'm in the Bay Area right now, but for, for the kids' pillows. Right, right. In a Best Buy bathroom, and I am Brad Henderson. That is true. You are Brad Henderson, the one and only. All right, sweetheart. No one can replace <laughs> Brad Henderson. No one will ever replace Brad Henderson. Now, let me ask you 
uh, this. Let's <laughs> let's get to this. Why do you think they bought? When I say they, I mean one singular person, John Duncan. What do you think was up with the the story around the young woman who is going to go house sitting for her boss? Like, because it, it seems. It seems very contrived because there's a lot of scenes before she even goes and, and spends the weekend uh, at the house where she's arguing with her sister and we're getting into like gun control and like uh, we're, we're, mm-hmm. we're getting into responsible uh, gun ownership with the sister saying like, hey, here's my piece in case anyone tries to break into the house. I want you to shoot them in the fucking face and take no names, just bury their bodies, get it done. Also... Mom might be kind of mad, but I I wonder what this story came from, because I was very just more interested in the titular. There's that word again, making me think about girls, (sighs) making my ween ween, thinking some something nice, nice. But like, why did (laughs) why did we have this story? What What do you think the importance of that was? Because when we get to the ending, it all hinges on this other. Mm-hmm. This other piece that that is less compelling, I think, than than the rest of the film. That is a good question. Um, I I I think maybe there was some stress in her life that she was needing to get away from, possibly, and that this offer was kind of something that she maybe couldn't refuse. <laughs> Wait, are we going? Maybe. Are we going back to your Italian film slash food references? <laughs> yes, yes. I'm 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 wondering. I mean. Because there's really no character, like, it doesn't really develop her character at all in in the story. Really, it doesn't really inform that character. I'm I'm thinking maybe it was padding to try to get this thing to feature length, try to get her uh, into this isolated area uh, to deal with this. Because I, I, I feel like it's not necessarily conducive at all to the moments when she's at the house dealing with the hackers. Because she's really just kind of going about her business. You know, wearing short little shorts, uh, washing dishes, listening to her headphones, uh, walking to the barn thing, place and back. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it certainly seems like padding. But uh, do do you think do you think that they put that padding in there to uh, because she's used as in within the narrative, she's used as uh, a, a a woman of like sexual power, right? She's not introduced right. that way, but ultimately that's like her purpose is she makes Eldon a little horny, right? She makes Arnie right. a little horny and she makes Pa a little angry that his boys are a little horny. So she's used as like this, uh, this sexual pawn, which, which, you know, thank God for her, that uh, nothing ever <laughs> came of that that storyline, but do you think I was worried it would go there, and I was glad that it did not. Oh yeah, I hate that shit, man. When it goes like into like this uh, like rape fantasies, and uh, I, I, I can't <sighs> I can't stand it. I I mean, I, I can understand like the narrative going like, hey, these are guys that are, uh, you know, hungry and and horny, and you know they're they're pining for this thing, but. I, I can't get I can't do it when when it gets to a point of violence and certainly to a point of uh, uh, rape, which is no here here uh, it gets to basically kind of ape monkey dances uh, and kind of like enthusiastic nodding and and the, and 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 uh, some some distraction that leads to some some pretty awful things happening to poor uh, poor Arnie. Oh yeah. Do do we want to talk about what happened to poor Arnie? Oh, I want to go back to the 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 part that Brad said about the the young woman walking into the barn. I actually think that that's a beautiful mm-hmm. shot within the movie where we have Arnie and Eldon looking at each other on either side of the the frame. You know, right frame, left. Uh, Arnie's on the right frame, Eldon's on the left frame, and then uh, center we have uh, the the woman walking into the barn. The the barn is this beautiful bright red Americana barn, but everything about this sh- the house is wonderful. Actually, the oh, house yeah. is gorgeous. It's a really good looking house. Yeah, no, it's a, nice property. It's an amazing house. Uh, plenty of magazines to read. Apparently, at the house, and uh, <laughs> and and the back barn is is gorgeous. But in front of the back barn, they have the uh, 
the the woodworker's table where the boys are working on cutting wood to to fix uh the the roof of the house. I believe they're working on the roof, right? Yes. Yep. It's not it's not clear exactly what they're I mean, doing. You know, it's not really clear exactly. They all all I know is they have a lot of work to do. Um but they're up and down that ladder a lot and you hear a lot of hammering. So I'm assuming they're probably re re uh uh re-roofing the house. Yeah. So so they're down uh, at the at the woodwork table, and they're cutting things to re-roof the house or whatever. But they're so distracted by the uh, by the by the uh, jean booty that's walking out uh, mm-hmm. to the back barn. They're so distracted that uh, w- w- Alton, what's his name? Eldon? Alton? <laughs> Eldon? Eldon. Eldon is uh, Leatherface. Who's Eldon. the other one? Arnie. Arnie. Arnie there we go. And Eldon. I gotta remember Arnie because Arnie wears fatigues, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, also known as Arnie, <laughs> wears fatigues in Commando. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. There we go. So Arnie is distracted, and Eldon is distracted, and they're both looking at Gene Booty, and then Arnie's fingers go straight into the uh, the saw blade, and of course we <sighs> we lose digits. <sighs> and therein comes my cuisine oh, recommendation. Dear God. Yeah. This this is this is a this is a reason why I never ever wanted to do wood shop or really do anything as far as construction goes. I I have a fear of losing my digits to saws. I don't know. Sometimes I I feel like uh, Ron Livingston in a uh, office space. You know, like I, I kind of feel like life mm-hmm. would be better. If I worked in construction or <laughs> some, some kind of like manual, <laughs> putting up that drywall at the McDonald's over down there. But I, but I feel like that because I mean, as a as a teacher and as a uh, shot on video podcaster, <laughs> I, there's there's really nothing I could stand <laughs> back and look at immediately and go like, oh, I did a good job. But I think with manual labor, uh, you know, especially when I worked retail and I would do manual labor at the end of the day. I could literally walk back seven feet and go, I built that fucking thing, or I fixed that fucking thing. I physically fixed that thing. and uh, I sold that t-shirt yeah. in that display. <laughs> I'm fucking awesome. Yeah, the J. Crew display looks like shit now because I sold all the clothes on it. <laughs> Brad, did you know I was a <laughs> did you know I was a stockroom manager at uh, J Crew? I, I did not. I'm I'm pretty sure you were pretty fabulous at it. Yeah, I was fabulous. Is that what you said? Fabulous. Fa- fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah. No, I was fabulous. All right. So fabulous. <laughs> so back back to it. We have a young woman. <sighs> we're all over the place, man. We are like we need to take our we are we need to take our goddamn riddle in. We need to have like a stress ball. <laughs> we need to have some kind of organization chart to talk about John Duncan's 1988. My notes are all over the place. Oh, I I imagine it, baby. You will you write them on all the receipts of your your fast food uh, excursion. So yeah, unless yeah, I didn't really have much to work with. Yeah, well, what you got to do is you got to flip over the receipt and see the time and date that you bought the the burger or the fries, and then. You use that for your chronological order, and then boom, you, fl- oh. you flip the stack, flip the stack back over. Life hack. <laughs> Life hackers. And you flip the stack back over, <laughs> and then there you have your uh, your notes. Now, so we have a young woman. She's invited by her boss. It's a great opportunity to go babysit his house. All she has to do is read magazines and and smile. And then these uh, these guys called the hackers come, and they want water, and they want to fix the roof, and they want a uh, payment on the job. But then they discover that her booty's a little bit too fabulous in nineteen late eighties denim, uh, and they yep. they get a little horn doggy. Now, her her life kind of becomes this, at least for the back like fifteen minutes of the film, it becomes this uh, home invasion nightmare. It, it becomes funny games. It becomes strangers. Strangers pray at night now in theaters. Uh, and <laughs> she's she's got to contend with the 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 brothers two and the father one. You know. And yes. What take take us up through uh, the end of the film? Hold on, hold on. So okay, so poor Arnie loses his poor finger, right? Right. And I, I I'm not sure. Like it it seems like they don't take him to the hospital, but they just kind of. Wrap it up tight, and paw hackers piss because obviously it's Marcy's fault, right? Her name's Marcy. 
That's what IMDb says right here. Uh, her name is Marcy, played by Michelle Rank. You know, the other day I was uh, I made a joke at work about uh, married with children, and I couldn't remember the neighbors' names. And like now, you reminded me, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, so, but she doesn't really know all this is going on at all, uh, really, which is kind of crazy to me because if you have possibly people working on your property and someone cuts off a finger i'm sure maybe you would know about it but pa hacker basically blames her uh he breaks in or just comes in the house and he has a hatchet and he you know wants to use the bathroom so he's stalking her so so basically all three of them are basically gunning for her in different uh you know different areas of the house and she's basically trying to hide from them fight or you know fight or flight uh it, it turns into basically the last 15 minutes of pretty much any slasher that i've seen but uh one of my favorite lines because she's being chased by eldon and she she finds her gun in her her gun is in her little uh makeup bag right her little uh little gun that she was giving it, it, no was this the same gun because this looked a little lighter and smaller i don't know if they some con- there may have been some continuity problems here I don't but, know. Uh, I was I was finds... recently I was recently on a Xenopod from the year five thousand, and mm, I, I mm. thought about bringing up a wonderful podcast. That, yeah, I, th- I thought about bringing up that uh, a couple of the cars that Emilio Estevez and uh, Harry Dean <laughs> Stanton were in 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 Repo Man were the interior was different than the exterior, at least as mm-hmm. far as like the four door versus the two door. I didn't bring that up to Sean. I don't I don't think Sean's a big <laughs> numbers guy. Or a continuity guy. He's kind of like big, big really. budget Dreger. You know, give him, big, give him the, give him the special effects, uh, the production value, and he will blow a load in his pants. Um, yeah, I, w- I was shocked I got him to watch Repo Man. To be quite honest I with know. you, he wouldn't watch I any know. of this shit that we do over here. But, um, <laughs> but no, I, I, you know, I'm a little impervious to, you know, the look. All I see when I, when I see a gun, Brad. I really just see a flower, and mm. I think all all guns should be replaced by flowers. I agree, or walkie talkies, or snowflakes. All right, keep going. Mm. So, so she finds her gun, and she's being chased by Eldon. Uh, what weapon does Eldon have? They all have kind of their own little uh, work tools. So he's chasing her. She shoots him, and he falls down. Pa Hacker comes in, and he goes, "You shot that bitch. Got a gun." And it's one of my favorite lines in this film by Pa Hacker. So they chase her. He chases her upstairs. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I want to give a play by play of everything here, but the last 15 minutes is actually, I think, where the film really picks up. I really, really, really dug uh, once we're in this home invasion type of film. I really dug it. Eldon gets scalped and uh, uh, Arnie chases her out to the car you have your, you have your cars and the keys moment of her trying to frantically get in the car there's a fantastic gore gag of uh of the well before that she had hit arnie in the head with this like sieve or something and it's sticking out of his head and he's chasing her and he's holding onto the side of the car and she brings us out of the car towards a, a power pole and all you hear is a and you just see like the top of his head just sticking out, you know, still stuck to the car on that uh, with that sieve thing just hanging there like a wonderful little ornament. Uh, and uh, that's that's a pretty, pretty fantastic moment in this film. I'm Brad Henderson. We you know, Brad Henderson, we should take a, a moment now to just really talk about like the, the artistry in the film. The, the framing yes. are great. A lot of it is yes. uh, is shot on a on, on a tripod or on a on a very like steady crane. The uh, the the music we have we have oh. opening we have an opening theme song. Let's play that theme song now.
theme song is the business. The theme song is great. The score is great. Do we have written down who did the score? Did John Duncan do the score? I'm sure it's in the credits and no one filled in the IMDb. But the score all the way through is really, really good. Like, I was really surprised. Because a lot of times with these movies, it's just kind of somebody dabbling on a Casio keyboard. But this is actually, like, you know, it's still electronic, but it's still, there's some fantastic composing going on. There's themes, there's tension building songs, there's a montage song for the montage. Sometimes you need a montage. The music was done by David Christopher, who I don't trust because he has two first names, and also uh, (laughs) Millie Duncan, who I do trust because she has the director's last name. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I I would like the the production aspects of this film, and Daddy Dreger would be pretty damn impressed, I think, with the technical merit of this shot on video film because they they did approach this like a film through the framing, the composition, like you said, of the shots, and uh, I was, you know. I was I was I was impressed with that, and I I think I I wish John Duncan would would go on to do more more things after this. Uh, but he, it looks like he only did one more film. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it. You have not seen it, Brad uh, uh, F. Henderson. I mean, I mean, <clears throat> I'm Brad Henderson. I've seen this. It's amazing. It's called Black River Monster. He directed it. Oh no, that was his first feature uh, in 1986. So Hackers was his second feature. And uh, he didn't do anything after this. But check out Black River Monster. It's incredible. Hey, why don't we grab a couple of these saddles yeah. and okay, come on, let's get out of here. Come on. It's going to be daylight soon. Sounds like some kind of animal, Mr. D. Those must have run into something they didn't count on. Favorite SOB of all time. What is what is the Black River Monster? What does it look like, Brad F. Henderson? It looks like uh, the uh, werewolf. Uh, literally War- the werewolf. It, werewolf? it literally looks like the Wolfman, the classic Wolfman getup. It's like they bought a Wolfman costume, like a really expensive one. Uh-huh. And, uh, and 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 just put that sucker on. When I think of uh, when I think of rivers and monsters, I think of serpents. And then when I think of mm-hmm. black serpents, mm-hmm. I think of long black snakes. The <laughs> the cover is basically a big man in overalls with a wheelbarrow and a goat. Uh, two ranch hands are kind of looking over a fence, and then in the background, superimposed is the big wolf man. Like, literally, the Wolfman from 1941. The, the Lon Chaney Jr. Yes. Brad, I gotta, yes. I gotta check, it, I gotta check that one out. Now, we are, <laughs> we are, of course, coming up to the end of T-H-E-S-O-V-P-O-D, episode nine. The episode stands for, there, there are, of course, eight preceding episodes. So, of course, watch and listen to all of our preceding episodes. You're like, watch, why would I watch your episodes? Well, guess what? If you there, there's a specific Google search term you can you can put into Google uh, to find our videos. It's it's a super secret thing. You type in "cuckold" c u c k o l d Trump t r u m p, and you will you will find our videos on YouTube. Now, Brad, you're in uh, you're in South by for the next week, week and a half. Uh, what else are you gonna watch, yep. buddy? Uh, well, I hear there's a Geostorm two. They did a secret sequel to Geostorm two. I'm so excited to check that out because Geostorm was the inspiration for us talking about the hackers. So follow me on Instagram. I mean Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, uh, Brad F Henderson. Tell me you heard me on. T H E S O V P O D, and tell me how much you appreciate that I love Geostorm with all my heart. 
Uh, but yeah, I'll be watching a lot of movies. I'll be eating gigantic Chicago dogs and mac and cheese all week long here, here in Austin. Come say hi. Give me a squeeze on the left butt cheek and I will love you forever. <laughs> I love Chicago dogs. That is uh, my Brad. That's my sexual orientation is is uh, mm. Chicago dog. Now, uh, anything anything to plug? Uh, you you had a recent uh, screamcast drop that you were on, correct, Brad? Vinegar syndrome. Uh, yeah, the re- recent the last two screamcasts I was not on. Oh, uh, oh. but they are probably the best podcasts we have ever done on the screamcast. I'm uh, very proud of the work that Sean Daddy Drager does. He is amazing. The most incredible podcast producer I think I've ever known in my entire life. Uh, you, you know, not, I mean, other than you, Mike Delaney, of course. Uh, but Sean is incredible. He has a gigantic uh, penis. I've seen penis Sean's collection. penis. It's, it's and huge. Uh, he does collect whiskey. So Sean's a really great guy. You all should follow him. Uh, Sean C. DeRager on Twitter, but I am Brad Henderson, Brad F. Henderson, follow me too, and go to ScreamingPods.com and listen to Xenopod from the year 5000, probably the most important podcast known to man, aside from SOV, POD, I Love Everything, and Chicago Dogs, and drive Through Pasta. It was our first date. We are going to go for pizza, but I wanted to make a big impression. So we went to Fazoli's for Pizzerinos. It's pizza, Fazoli style. They make them on thick-cut Italian bread with lots of pizza sauce and tons of toppings. Then they load them with cheese and bake them fresh, hot, and crispy. Pizzerinos. I think she liked it. I think her dad did, too. There's nothing like Fazoli's. I am Brad Henderson. <laughs> did now did you and Sean DeRinker get together and you're like we'll do our first name we'll do our middle initial we'll do we'll do our last name cuz like I feel like Brad I feel like Brad I feel like the only uh people that use their first middle initial and last name are either film directors podcasters mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. or people that assassinate presidents <laughs> Uh Sean copied me hands down he was called Geek Couch from an old, old podcast he did, old website, and he changed it and copied me. But, uh, you know, imitation is the best form of flattery, so uh, I, I love him. I love him for it. Wait, Sean DeRegger's real uh, Twitter used to be Geek Couch? <laughs> yes. What a fucking loser <laughs> that guy was. I can't believe he would ever think uh, Geek Couch is a really cool name. That's so embarrassing. Oh my god. All right. Uh <laughs> let me let me uh let me wrap this up, Brad. Stop talking. All right. So you can look, it's hard to find the hackers. It's it's not available on any of our uh, great labels that we love, Massacre Video, Intervision, uh Corporation. Uh it, it's not available. You can go to the Camelot website, you could try to order it, but the, the link doesn't work. You can go to eBay. You can try to get a physical copy of it. Uh, that that sort of works. Or you know, you could um, maybe maybe you know somebody you could DM. <laughs> wink. Maybe maybe you know somebody you could DM. Wink. Uh, and uh, you could find the movie through prayer, thoughts and prayers. I don't know. But uh, you, 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 but look, watch. They, there's a phone number on their website. CamelotStudios.net. Call them. Ask them for the hackers. There you go. Call uh, them up. Call them up. 810-385-9522. And if you need any video <laughs> production, industrial photography services, automotive, commercials, healthcare, web video, live streaming, camera crews, conferences and events, editing and studio services, I am not reading their website at all right now. Call them. 810-385-9522. CamelotStudios.net. <laughs> Thank you, Brad F. Anderson. Uh, yeah, no, g- please go watch The Hackers. God damn it, you'll love it, especially if you're a fan of uh, Toby Hooper and or his crazy cannibalistic uh, Texan family uh, that that likes to 
but chop people with chainsaws, my friend. Mm. Uh, I'm Mike D. Again, I uh, I co-host the uh, the Splat House podcast. You can find us at Splat House PR on Twitter. Uh, follow us, man. We got um, we got almost forty episodes now of uh, interviews and uh, skits and music and fun shit around uh, uh, multiple cult films and uh, I I don't know great great films. Brad, do you ever listen to my show? What's up? What's up? What's up? Brad, do you ever listen to my show? The the Splat House? What's up? Splat um Splat what? What's up? Splat. What's up? I don't listen I don't even listen to my own podcast. Right, I don't enough. I don't listen to podcasts. I only watch movies twenty four okay. hours a day, seven days a week. Movies, movies <laughs> and movies. Fair fair enough. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. I'll, you know I'll hear All right, cool. Well, over there, there's a uh, this week. There's a full commentary for the uh, 1977 Japanese film House. So please play with that. Please follow all of our podcasts on the Screaming Pods Network. For Brad, fantastic film fest can suck it. I'm Brad. Uh, South by Baby Henderson, and I am Mike D. Look, this is Mike D. Saying it was all a dream.